So here's the deal. My family, my whole family, let me go with them on a cruise to Alaska over the last week. And when you get off the boat in Seattle to go back home to Oregon, and you're only a couple hours from the Canadian border, you might as well go up and make a couple of stops. And so I'm going up to visit Buck and Billy Ray. He's directed me to the Sawasan, Tasawasan terminal to a ferry. I'm going to wait here for either an hour and a half or four and a half hours, depending on I don't know what. And then we'll get the we'll drive onto the boat. We'll be sailed across the bay, the strait, the harbor, whatever it is, to Nanaimo. And I've got a chance to visit that guy, and I want him to teach me something about chainsaw maintenance and tuning. Because if there's anybody that doesn't know, it's me. And if there's anybody that knows, it's Buck and Billy Ray Smith. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at Buck and Billy Ray's place. He led me right on in. And here he is. The humble abode. The humble abode. You got your camera. I got, I got my camera. Don't go nowhere without it, Bill. What a pleasure. Good to meet friend. you, man. What a pleasure. Nice meeting Good you, too. Good to meet you. So, hey everybody. You, you guys have seen him on the channel before. What a guy. And he brought me up here to show me a tool and, and to uh, get some ideas about something to do with it. We'll save that till later. But in the meantime, you got a beautiful place here, Thank man. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for coming. It's a, yeah, I see you all the time on the computer, and you know what it's like. I know. You've been traveling, and I you know. see different YouTubers. And what a treat. Hello to all your fans. Yeah. But one of the few people on YouTube that I can say, go see this man if you're looking for a positive message in life in general. There's so, only a few. So he's slathering it on a little thick so here, ladies and gentlemen. Thick. But have you ever seen a woodshed more neatly put together than that? Well, I'm a little embarrassed. It's not as full as I like it. Yeah, well, that's all right. The season's just started, yeah. right? You're coming out of winter. Yeah, we got to get two years ahead. You want to stay two years ahead as, as much as you can if you have the space, Yeah, is what have, I think. If you have the space. And every time I do a YouTube video in the winter and I start talking about my firewood and stuff, and people ask about the chimneys and, oh, doesn't that burn? This doesn't sit and all that? No, because it's dry. Yeah, yeah. And I point up to the chimney. Yeah. And there's no smoke coming out of it. Oh, I see. You see that chimney over there, that triple wall, yeah. eight inch, I think, and there's no smoke because it's dry. Yeah. So you want your wood super, super dry, and you're always fighting moisture content. Yeah. You're always fighting it, you know, yeah. if, if you're buying your firewood. Yeah. One of the things that he's going to show me in the short period of time that I have here is something about tuning a chainsaw. Mm. I've been running them since I was 13 years old, but it was always if they didn't run, I either let dad fix it or we took it to the shop. Mm -hmm. So I'm anxious to learn something about the ports and the jets and the adjustments and what it takes to make a saw really scream and something tells me this guy knows how we could probably help you out a bit with that i'm going to run through this like if you guys find a power saw you're out looking around at a, at a freaking garage sale and you find an old saw and you think well that's neat first thing it's not a guarantee but it's something that everybody does and you'll see everybody on youtube freaking doing it after they build a song go hey check this out wow <laughs> look at that compression <laughs> So anyways, I'm being silly, but that, that is a very good sign. Yeah. It tells you that things are good. It, it yeah. tells you you've got some thump in there. And it's not locked. It's not froze up. Exactly. And even if it is, sometimes these old ones, it can be the starter and not the, see, so you bonus Oh, just out. the rope is bound yeah, in there. Yeah, you okay. could get some. Okay. But, but the tuning thing, so what I tell folks, you got to have your handy dandy jet driver in your, in your pocket there. You got okay. can't leave home without that. You have a high circuit and a low circuit. See that right there? Tell me, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to tell you. Okay. This, your low circuit is your idle, and I'm actually going to fire this saw, and it'll probably idle because I did fire it when it was given to me, and it come from across Canada someplace. Your high jet is open throttle, wide open. Okay. You can actually, this saw, if I turn that high jet right off, this saw will still run, but as soon as I squeeze the trigger, it'll go, oh, oh. and so it's a high circuit. Okay. So... This is what I do, friends, on a, on a saw like this that you find at the garage sale. A safe bet to start from is the first thing I do. Once you know you got spark, and if you want to find out if you got spark, just squirt some fuel in the freaking uh, carburetor. Mm -hmm. Just squirt some fuel. You can take the plug out and do that too, but just squirt a little shot in the carburetor and just pull on it. Just pop like that. And if it fires, you got spark. If it coughs. Yeah, it just does a little, yeah, exactly, ignites, okay. eh? That's what I would do. And then if not, just take your plug out and do the thing where you pull on it and put it against a piece of metal and you'll look for a blue a blue light. And if you hold it yourself, you learn how, what electricity feels yes, like. You yes, do, you do, and it goes right up your arm <laughs> and right. gets you. So what I do, these are, t turn your jets right off. Turn them right off. Like, turn it to the right, down yeah, tight, yeah, right tight. Right to the tight and close them right off. So those are off right now, completely shut. 
Now this is what I'm going to do. I know I got gas in this sock because I kind of thought you might be coming here today. Mm -hmm. But I honestly don't know where this thing's tuned at. I, I have no idea. You don't know where the, the band, where it'll operate is. Yeah, I believe because I turned them off, I believe it was fat, fat, fat rich. Okay. Like about maybe a turn and a half on the high, which is too far. It's okay. safe, but you'll see what I mean here. So I'm just going to go like this. Half, one, and about a quarter. Okay, on the low circuit. On both. On both. You on both. Think it's a both. safe bet. Okay. It'll tell you. Now, there's something important to know. So we're, we're closed off. So we're going to go one, a half, one, and about a quarter. Okay. So this, if this saw is going to give you the give you the fizz, it's going to let you know right now. Okay. Now, some people get crazy on the idle because the guy that had it before you maybe didn't know what he was doing and he had it all over the map. Get in here with your idle. Okay, this is your idle. Little make set, sure little set screw, little set out the screw on the linkage. See, oh, yep, it's yep. very simple. But make sure that you don't have a bunch of idle running to the saw or it'll screw your uh, tuning up. So back that off there. It's already off. See that? So watch that as that hits this idle, Scott. Just watch that idle jump. Yep. Did yep, it move? Yep, moved up. There moved. you go. So that's, that's enough idle for things to work. So I'm just going to fire it. If your shoulder's sore and you're, you're getting old like me and Scott here, this is what I suggest to do. Okay, he's getting old. I got old. Yeah, well, he's older than I am. Let's be honest. So get your little fuel squirter, friends. I got a pretty good feeling this thing's going to fire. And just because I could pull on this forever. And if you want to find out what your saw is doing, this is not the best way. Because if you're learning about your saw, you want to know. So choke it. Simple. Choke it. Pull the choke out. If you want to know if you're pulling fuel, you would just do a normal starting procedure, which I can do right now. We got it choked. It's turned on. There it goes. There it coughed. It popped. So I'm going to shut the choke off. Here's, I see this. If Please, if somebody watches this video, you'll get more views than I will, Scott. That's just the way life rolls. Please share this with people. I've seen so many people do this. It pops. As soon as it pops, Get your finger on the trigger on the next fire. You know this because I've seen you do this mm -hmm. on your channel. Get some fuel going to it. I could fire this again and no fuel and it'll cough and fart again. But if you hit it and give it full squirt. Now watch this. Watch what happens on the low jet. When it gets to that that kind of a crisp, higher, clearer note, it's it's lean. Yeah, it, it's gonna get lean, and you'll what'll ha and that's a dangerous spot, and that's why they switch to some carburetors that are governed. You can don't matter what you do, it'll just govern it and keep feeding it fuel so you don't blow it up. And right. there's also single jet carbs, which the 125 Mac had, uh, so that guys couldn't cook them. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea. This saw with... So let's talk about why it wrecks them. Because it, the oil into the whole mechanism is coming with the fuel. So if you starve that fuel and it's running on a rich, on a leaner, more oxygen, less mm. fuel, there's no oil going in there. Yeah. And so it's cycling a million Heat. miles an hour yeah. and it heats up and it burns itself up. Yep. 
I thought this was voodoo too. Yeah. I did back in the day until I met the Walker saw shop. Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I tune a I tune a good saw. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tune my own. Sure. I, I've been tuning these for many, many years. And I've gone too far sometimes where I've been in the wood. I'm like, okay, I think I can squeak a bit more. And I'd squeak a bit more, but then I'd lose power. And I'd think, well... Oh, there's no fuel in there. No fuel. So I'd add a bit more fuel and the, the saw would feel thicker. Yeah. Just better in the wood. Yeah, yeah. You know the feeling. Yeah, I do know the feeling. So you have to be careful. A lot of guys will go way way up there and then bring it back to that gurgle you, uh -huh. you saw yeah, it do yeah, that yeah, here. yeah this carb needs work so it's a darn fool that'll go into another man's camp and start doing another man's job right but he set me up with this beautiful axe and it's a beauty and then he's got another one over here that he wants me to try out and so he's got these rounds they are about 12 inches long right and it's alaskan yellow cedar and in my life i've never taken a splitting mall or an axe for that matter to a piece of alaskan yellow cedar but I can tell it's just sitting here crying to break into pieces. And so I'm going to use some of these tools which are familiar but not quite hometown variety tools and just see how they do it up here in British Columbia. It's not begging to split. Deceiving. But it's going to. It ain't Western Red, is it? No, it's a different species completely. It's actually harder than fur. Yeah. But once you get into that nice straight grain, it's beautiful. So we're going to pull out of here in a few minutes and go over to a spot that he has already taken some trees out for the his friends who live there. We're going to take out one more. I'm going to film that for him and then probably get my hands on one of his saws and buck some rounds off the butt end and maybe knock some limbs off. But first, I'm going to turn this on to Buck and he's going to talk a little bit about machine ground chains and uh, some of the some of the things you watch for when you're filing your saw. Because a dull saw will cut, but there is just nothing like picking up a saw that is sharp and hungry and ready to pull some wood out. And this guy knows how to do that. So I grind for, for production falling and clean settings. Mm -hmm. And I hand file for all the rest of the stuff. So mm -hmm. I just want to take you in and show you my little setup. Good. My little Symington. If, you, if your GoPro is good enough to look at this chain, this chain will cut. It mm -hmm. will cut, but Scott, it's ragged. If you look closely at the top plate, you will actually see raggedness on some of these. Yep. I just saw, the, it's not sharp. Corners are a little bruised on some Well, them. and the whole top plate is just a little ragged. And, and I know it might be hard for folks to see, but you can see it's a used chain. Mm -hmm. Square ground chain. You can do it by hand, yes you can. In the last two years, I've actually trained myself and am learning to square by hand, mm -hmm. which is this file here. They, I believe they call this the goofy file. See, it's a bevel. Yep. That is a square. That's what I use for square filing. And that actually goes in on a 45 angle. Yep. Like this. It's hard to get the feel of. It is, oh, it is. square filing is different, but I wanted to learn it, Scott, so I could speak to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Not mm -hmm. because I need to master it. Mm -hmm. Out in the bush, maybe I, we carry chains. So we get rocked, we grab our bag, poop, poop, poop chain on, you keep cutting. Mm -hmm. You're not filing in the bush. Mm -hmm. I don't file production filing mm -hmm. in, the, in the woods. Mm -hmm. I swap a chain mm -hmm. and get cutting. So this is a uh, square ground chain. So I just want to show you what, what this uh, is about real quickly, just for your, for your Edification. viewers. Edification. Yeah. Edification. Yeah. Let's just, and you want to have a light. I see guys getting into grinding. They put their machines down low and they're looking at their top plate. I don't recommend that for guys starting to square grind on a machine. I recommend being able to see your corner. You, you want to see the relationship. You can get right in there, Scott, if you want. I can even dress my stone. But you want to be able to see the relationship of the corner of the stone mm -hmm. in there. So if you're looking down, all you're seeing is your top plate. And you mm -hmm. don't know whether you got a side beak or a top beak. Mm -hmm. Top beak won't cut nothing. Mm -hmm. A side beak will, but it'll be gravy mm -hmm. and, and break up mm -hmm. and get weak. So everybody runs a little different of a grind. These... I'm just going to go ahead here, but to dress the stone, they have diamond uh, dressers here. And you just, hear that? Yep. Take it back to full width. You just, you can actually see the stone change. I'll just dress the top a little bit to get you the. Let's grind a chain. You want to start, you got your little adjustment here. This is a Symington. Now watch that come into the two. Look at that. Yep. Look at this. I'm only doing a touch-up uh, a touch-up filing right now. Yep. Go 
don't have to remove much. Now, it's very important at this stage to have a gander. Let me get this. We're on a top plate. So let's get this. This is our first. I may have to dress that top plate. That's what I'm after. Can you see that line? Yep, there's the reflection. Shiny, silver, freshly ground. And you want that right up in the corner. There's a great shot of it there. Now there's the top plate. Look at that. The corner's where the cut starts. See? So, and here's the side plate. And people say, well, why don't you take your gullet out? And I say to them, do both. Okay, so scenario. Cutting day's over. Six and a half, done. Yeah. Saw gets left in the bush, under the shawl, under the old windfall. Debar it, right? Yeah. Envision what's going on. You were cutting with this bar all day on, the, on like this, okay? Uh -huh. So what I do is I pop my chain off. Uh -huh. Like it was just in the shape it was before we started. I pop it off, I stick it in my bag, I grab my bar, I visualize, I clean the rails out, I blow my holes out, and I flip the bar and I put it back on the power saw. Yeah. And I leave it like that and I do that every single day. Every after, day. Every day. Even where? Falling production. Not just here and there cutting like old Bucking does nowadays. Yeah. As I, you know, as I don't yeah. charge sure. people, I just float around and do sure. tree work for fun. Sure. And for my being. Sure. But production setting, every day. <laughs> This obviously is a long form video. If you're still hanging with us, it's because you are interested in chainsaws and how they work and what can be done with them. And uh, frankly, I am too, because I've been running them since I was 13, but it was more a desperation sort of an approach to it than, a, than an informed a approach. It was a chore. It was a chore. Uh, but I learned to love it and I made money doing it, but there's always another level of expertise and detail around the tools that we use. And whether or not we need it, we're never sorry once we learned it. Look at this. Wow. You got axes floating from the ceiling. I have a couple. And I, I, I don't know even what happened. It happened so fast, Scott. Yeah. Somebody said they wanted an axe on YouTube. I said, I don't do those kinds of things. <laughs> and then I said, okay, I'll do one. So when we were young, we didn't spend as much time thinking about being kind. No, because your parents, it's just what it was. I, don't, yeah. I, I mean, I, I know I can speak for you because that's just what it was. It's just what it was. Yeah. It wasn't a neat, trendy thing to yeah. do. It's just what was being taught. It was what it was. But it's easier, it seems like. It's harder for young, particularly young men who didn't get jerked up right. It's hard to break that habit of being concerned with self it at is. the expense of everybody around you. It's hard to break that habit. It is. It's easier for an old man, or maybe it's harder for, for an old guy who never learned that as a pup. Maybe that's a harder habit a, to break. That's a good point. That, I think you could go either way with that. Yeah. Like an old dog's going to get, he's going to get stuck in his, in his ways, and this yeah. is how it is. And that's right. That can be black and white. That can be, that can be a, a journey on its own. But, yeah. but I find, I think the most important thing that you just said was, not getting jerked up right. Yeah. If you come from a family that's broken or, or, or you know, it's more prevalent now as a drug and alcohol has yeah. really wreaked, wreaked havoc on a lot of families. Messed the up. father becomes absent. Yeah. Now the kids are looking to have an identity yeah. and it wears. It wears. It just wears. And there's a lot of guys that, that watch both of our channels that didn't have the advantage of a dad at home. I, I, I'm seeing that, Scott. Yeah, there's and a I, lot. I'm, I don't see myself as any type of role model, but I, I guess I get told I am, and I know you do. Yeah, yeah, we do. So here's the deal, guys. If you didn't have a dad, and if you've been spending the last 20 or 30 years trying to recover from that, don't, don't wear out on it. And when you have a son or daughters, you compensate, right? You compensate, right and you just make sure that whatever it is you didn't have, that you know you needed to have, they get it in spades. Yeah. And this right here is one of the first things you teach them. And then right over here is the second thing. <laughs> uh, my dad was absent. I, mm -hmm. was, I was one of those young fellas you were talking about. Yeah. But I had an amazing mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
the, the love and the kindness was was there. Okay. It wasn't that wasn't lacking. Yeah. From her, she compensated. She, she doubled down. She she compensated. Yeah, she did. And and when my kids, uh, like Hogan, <laughs> I tell that boy and my daughter, we are embraced. I better watch it because I'll start getting watery. But I tell that kid I love him and I hug him and squeeze him every day, hmm. and just you know, yeah. you you know what it's like. Yeah. So he made a good point. If you if you don't you know your identity comes from you, not from your dad. Yeah. Your identity comes from you. You make your own identity. Yeah. And I wanted to be a freaking logger and I had no logging skills. I had none of that stuff. I made a decision to live on a power saw and be a sawman yeah. when I was 27 years old. Yeah. And before that, it wasn't pretty. Yeah. I guess you could probably tell that I had a fine time at Buckin's place. He and his bride, Wendy, were gracious and hospitable and generous. And I hope someday to go back and maybe take Kelly with me. I learned firsthand that Buck and Billy Ray Smith is the same thing in real life that he is on his YouTube channel, and that's not an easy thing to maintain. You can take my word for that. And I also learned that for a kid from Oregon, Western Canada is a foreign country that has the same trees, the same bushes, the same animals. But it is a different place for sure. I enjoyed it. I learned a lot, and not just about chainsaws. I hope I can remember it. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.